100 dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is the 28th video in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a tabletop role-playing management application using Ruby on Rails 7. So in our previous video, we attempted to push our change and our build failed because there was a new patch version of Ruby. So we were, we were and are running 3.1.2 version 3.1.3 got released on November 24th, 2022. And so when we went to push the code, the uh, Ruby version we had, we were only specifying at the minor level rather than the patch level, which caused the build to fail. So now we wanna get the, uh, the latest patch version of Ruby installed in our app in this video, and that's what we'll be doing in this. Uh, so we'll move this into progress. So there are a few things you need to do when you're upgrading a patch version, and it, it's going to potentially differ depending on what platform you're developing on. So in this case, we're developing on Ubuntu 2204, and I've got RVM, uh, Ruby Version Manager, that I'm using to manage my Ruby versions. So in order to do this, we're going to pull up our terminal, and we can see, all right, let's get into our directory here. Do this for all of our terminal windows here. All right. I think we're all there, oh, except we're in the main window. There we go. Okay, so uh, we'll just right now enter the RVM item, which gives you the, um, the information about the, um, the Ruby versions that we've got available and installed and all the different commands that you can run. So I'm going to do an RVM list here. And we can see that we've got a bunch of versions of Ruby starting with 2.7.2, .2, some 3.0 uh, patch versions and some 3.1 patch versions. So. We, on this particular system, don't have 3.1.3 installed, so we're going to do that first. So we'll do RVM install 3.1.3. I'll hit enter here and I'll, I'll pause and so that we're not just waiting for this uh, command to execute here. So. Pause now. And so in this case, I didn't really need to pause it. it on this particular system only took about 15 seconds for the, the install to happen. So now if we do an RVM list and see that um, Ruby 3.1.3 is here, we do Ruby-V, it has that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to you do RVM use 3.1.3 dash dash default to make that the default version there. Uh, now, before we try to do this, we've got to do some things in our Rails application. So there's a Ruby version file here. I want to make that 3.1.3. And then in our GitHub action workflow, um, I'm actually gonna go back to just doing the patch level because I, I actually want the build to fail if there's a new patch version out so that I can be alerted to it and upgrade it. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a pain when we do that, we'll be working on another feature, we'll have to add in the current patch version uh, to get the build to pass, but then we can always do the patch upgrade in the next video and then we'll, uh, rather than having to go out and constantly um, ping uh, Ruby, the Ruby website or whatever to find out if there's a new v version available or something like that, um, we can just be alerted by the fact that we've got a failing build. So we'll make that change there. And then we have our Ruby version updated. And now because if we, um, 
if I do Rails here, it's not installed on 3.1.3. So it'll say command Rails not found, and it can uh, you telling you how you can do that. So we'll make sure we're in the correct directory. We are. So here to uh, to solve for this, we'll just run a bundle install, and that will install all the gems that we uh, currently have in our gem file um, dot lock uh, on Ruby 3.1.3 and uh, depending on our version constraints that we have in our gem file it might install later versions of them than we have in our constraints so we're going to want to run all of our tests and um, make sure that our our app launches and all these things Okay, so we have an error now. Ruby version is 3.1.3, but your gem file specified 3.1.2. So let's go into our gem file and make that change as well. And then we also got a warning about um, 2.3.26 and 2.3.7. We'll just do a gem install bundler. And now we should be able to well, 2.3.7. Update that on my gemfile.lock. We'll see what happens here. All right, so Alright, so there's a warning about RubyZip, but um, that's a, my guess is that's a, um, a it's, we don't have that directly as a dependency, it's a dependency of a dependency. So we'll just, for the time being, uh, allow that to be uh, managed by the, um, the gem dependency itself. So now I should be able to We've got 7.0.4 running 3.1.3. I should be now able to run bin dev here. And we've got a sig term. Bundler version mismatch. Ah, okay. So in all of these now we need to. because we had those other um, terminal w windows open and they haven't applied that uh, RVM use 3.1.3 dash dash default default. Next time when I open a terminal window, window it will have 3.1.3 and um, we won't have to deal with that. But now we can do bin dev. You can see it installed Foreman kind of um, as part of its pre build process. And you can see, you can go into the Rails console, it's showing 3.1.3, which is what we want. 
If I go now to localhost, we can log in. with our user and everything appears to be working as expected. So we'll run our RuboCop. There's a possibility that RuboCop has come up with some new failures. It hasn't, which is good. Now we'll run our full test suite. This will take a couple, um, probably about a minute to run because of the um, the system tests that we have for devise take a while to run. So I'll use this opportunity to uh, let you know that we've got a um, Rails 7 getting started guide that goes through kind of all the topics in that um, in the Rails uh, guide. So go to guides. here and getting started with Rails, we have a series that goes through uh, every one of the, the topics in this getting started guide along with doing a little bit of rich text, a little bit of broadcasting with Turbo and um, some stimulus. So it's a good orientation to get started on um, the, the basics of Ruby on Rails 7 that go through the whole stack of model view controller and all of those other things. So uh, hopefully our our tests have run, they have passed. So I think we can, I'm going to check out a, a branch here rather than pushing the main itself. So we've got our workflow that we changed, our Ruby version, gem file and gem file dot lock. branch, take a look at our diff. So we knocked off the, uh, the patch version specification in our GitHub action. Uh, we changed our Ruby version. We changed the Ruby version in our bundler uh, or our gem file to indicate the uh, changes there. And then uh, the um, Ruby, uh, it just bundled with the, um, the, updated the Ruby version in the gem file. So it, it had all of the same um, ver gem versions that we had in our gem file dot lock installed. If I wanted to, I could do a bundle update and that would update the, uh, the versions of the gems uh, installed. But for the sake of sta stability, we'll just stick with what we've got there. So now we can add git commit I'll write my commit message all right we've got our commit message let's close that we will git push origin This will kick off a build. So uh, while we're working on that, letting that build happen, let's take a look at our branches. So we can delete some of these unused branches now. GitHub level, we've got these as well. So I, um, it's I, I think quicker to do it via um, via the command line here. Git push origin, and if you use the colon here, it will 
get rid of the uh, the different branches that you've got there. So um, get rid of the epic branch there and get rid of the bug fix branch. So now when we go back, you can see that we've only got the two branches available. Check out our build. It is still running. Uh, I'll pause and let that complete. All right, so our build has succeeded. We'll go in now and create a pull request. Checks have passed. We can, I'll merge this from the command line. Git check out main, git merge. Git push. And we can see our pull request has been merged. Our issue. Close our issue, which automatically moves it in our items. There's still a build going on on the main branch. I'll just end the video here. Um, and if anything weird happens, I can always put a, an addendum onto it if the, the build on main fails. Uh, taking a look at our upcoming items that we'll do in our um, kind of this mini epic before, or not epic, just kind of housekeeping section before we go into our actual design and backlog population of the, um, the org. We're probably going to knock out these two, three, four, five um, items. Uh, and this is December 23rd, so Christmas is coming before we uh, get, at some point there, we'll likely upgrade Ruby uh, minor version to 3.2 because it gets released on Christmas. And then um, once we get through there, we'll probably do a retrospective and then start specifically on our um, backlog population and design of the, um, the actual features of the application. So we will end there and um, Merry Christmas. We'll see you in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.